We have to celebrate UK research. It is a terrific success and it's one of the areas in which Britain really does lead the world. But the quality of the work we produce, the facilities we sustain and the efficiency with which we produce it is extraordinary. We really are number one in the world in terms of the value we extract from every single penny we spend. We invest over three billion pounds a year to support research and innovation. We collaborate with over two and a half thousand companies. Over a thousand of these are SMEs, that's small to medium sized enterprises. We support over 30,000 researchers. And also we have attracted in the last three years over one billion pounds worth of inward investment. What's crucial to remember is we're investing this not just for today, but for tomorrow too. Because we're also training postgraduates, we're maintaining facilities, we're enlarging our horizons and these leverage investment from across the planet. But we're doing this for not just for ourselves, but our children and our grandchildren. Well, you know, it'd be an odd thought to think that universities or research councils operate in isolation. They don't. In the UK, they operate in connection with a very, very complicated research system, which involves not just universities, not just research institutes. It also involves businesses, it involves the public sector, and it involves all of those things working together. Well, the UK research base has got some fantastic examples and stories to tell. The research councils have funded research which has enabled the development of a new synthetic vaccine which will be able to protect the UK cattle from further outbreaks of foot and mouth. But also importantly, it will also be used in Africa where foot and mouth is endemic in countries like Ethiopia and has dramatic effects on the population. The work that the research councils have invested in that enables better flood defences to be built and better predictions about which areas will flood has enabled over 50,000 homes to be protected in 2014 where the floods were much worse than those in 2007 and has also resulted in over £2 billion not being claimed by insurers. There again, another example of how our investments has actually had real practical output. We funded the research behind a uh, Oscar-listed documentary about Indonesia called The Act of Killing, which won international plaudits and has had record sales. We funded uh, products which are through 3D printing, which are being printed in tandem with um, pottery companies and so on. We fund games development that wins awards in Los Angeles, the British Museum, the v &A, all of those sorts of things to produce exactly the things which enhance our life and, you know, enhance our economy. We set out to develop a strategy which could market craft beers to all kinds of people who wanted to drink high quality beer who couldn't get it at their local supermarket. And we've developed this, it's called Beer 52, and from a very modest investment of some tens of thousands, it's now become a company with an annual turnover of two million pounds. But that is an example of how you use design skills, research know-how, technical expertise and it works in harness with a commercial endeavour. In order for the research councils to fulfil their ambition to make the UK the best place in the world to research, innovate and grow business, we will have to do several key things. The first is we will have to continue to invest in the broad and deep research excellence that we have in this country. The second is that we need to work with our partners, with Innovate UK, with the academic research base, with companies, to really accelerate the translation of that excellent research into new innovative products and services. If we can do this, then we will continue to be able to deliver not only for the UK economy, but also, and perhaps more importantly, for society.